Year 10 and welcome back. We are doing the last scene of Act 4, which would be argued as quite an important and key scene of Act 4 as well. Although very short, um, there are some key things that happen here and we really need to crack down this scene as it is quite long, but there are so many things that you need to know. So firstly, you can see at the beginning, it is before the King's Palace. So we're in England now in Edward the Confessor's English court and we have Malcolm and Macduff. Uh, in front of us. So I'm going to put this, this is our first real introduction to Malcolm as we haven't really got to know the character yet because we've been quite dominated with Macbeth. He is, as we know, the rightful king to Scotland as he is, I'm going to put in brackets, the eldest son to Duncan. Right? Um, and the reason we haven't got to know him yet is because the we've been dominated with Macbeth's um, leadership so far in the play. We haven't really got to see Malcolm and what he'd be like. And this scene I would put at the top as well that we're going to get into is very much that duplicitous, so two-faced meeting where Malcolm and Macduff are put up against each other and testing each other and seeing who's good, who's bad, who's right, who's wrong, um, who's fighting for what cause. So I would add to the top, we've got that duplicitous a meeting where the two men are put up against each other. Right, let's do this. Okay. <clears throat> Let us seek out some desolate shade and there weep our sad bosoms empty. Which is pretty much saying that he's mourning the loss of a kingdom. Which is Scotland and also what's, what's happened to it. <clears throat> Macduff, let us rather hold fast the mortal sword and like good men, which stride our downfall burst him. Each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face. It resounds as if it felt with Scotland and yelled out like syllable of dollar. Right, we've got the listing here of the destruction of Scotland. Look at all of the widows howling, orphans crying, new sorrows constantly. Um, so Scotland is in a terrible way. So it's listing the destruction of Scotland. And again, that would be quite horrible because that's their country. You know, they live there. It's like that patriotism to their country. Um, and there is some irony here, as we have just seen in the, in the scene before, Macduff's children have been um, orphaned and killed and crying. So we've got a little bit of um, irony due to the fact that Macduff doesn't know yet that he is part of that destruction. This destruction, his family have also been part of it. Okay. Malcolm, what I believe I'll wail, what no believe and what I can redress, as I shall find the time to friend I will. What you have spoke, it may be so perchance, this tyrant whose sole name blisters our tongues was once thought honest. I'm just going to pause there because that's at the bottom of page 72 for you. This tyrant, obviously referring to Macbeth, which is an interesting mode of address for him, as we keep seeing people call him a tyrant now, this dictator, this horrible a leader uh, blisters our tongues this name uh, which you can see here is Malcolm almost testing Macduff where is his loyalty does he feel the same about Macbeth or is Macduff there on Macbeth's will to kill him so it's a nice metaphor the blistering our tongues and where's your allegiance Macduff, are you here for me or are you here to assassinate me or to get rid of me for Macbeth? You have loved him well. He have not touched you yet. Which is interesting, another bit of irony. Because we know Macbeth has killed Macduff's family, so he has touched him in the metaphorical sense. I am young, but something you may deserve of him through me and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry God. Again, you can see that on the side there of your play. The image of the sacrificial lamb is central to the Christian religion and that he is perhaps he could be the lamb. It's entirely down to you on your interpretation. 
um, or offer him up basically a sacrifice. So you can put a little arrow to your on your play there, as we've got the um, Christian religion reference. Macduff, I am not treacherous. A simple, simple sentence there to just say, I'm not, I'm here for you, Malcolm. But Macbeth is. So we see here that Malcolm does not trust Macduff by that simple sentence. And that could be, there could be lots of reasons to that, but he doesn't trust him at this point because power, and we'll get to this, power corrupts people, just like Macbeth. A good and virtuous nature may recoil an imperial charge, geez. but I shall crave your pardon that which you are my thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. Though all things foul would wear the brow brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. So, men may look a certain way, um, but they have secret feelings behind it. So this is the angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. So this is all the kind of look like the innocent flower, be the serpent under it. So men can look a certain way, so be bright. Or the brightest, so the best men, but underneath it all, um, they can have secret feelings. So this very much parallels the duplicitousness within the play and that whole look like, I'm just going to put look like the innocent flower here. So another metaphor, Shakespeare loves a metaphor. And you can see also, though all things foul, we have this reference to the play again, fair is foul, foul is fair. Um, so message of the play is, I'm going to put the little mini quote of fair is foul here. And that's Malcolm just knowing that underneath it all, people can be wearing these masks, visards to our hearts, the, this idea of there are daggers in men's smiles. It's this all untrustworthiness of, of everyone. Um, and that does show, if you think about Malcolm as the future king, he is a wise king here. And what he's saying is so full of merit and uh, honesty that you can see that he is a calculated person and a level-headed person, um, which would be good for Scotland. I have lost my hopes. This is Macduff saying I've lost them in Macbeth, not in Malcolm. So he's like, I've lost my hopes, I need, I need you. Perchance even there where I did find my doubts, why in that rawness left your wife and child? It's a good question. Why did you leave your family? Unprotected. Those precious motives, those strong knots of love without leave taking, I pray you, let not my jealousies be your dishonours, but mine own safeties. You may be rightly just, whatever I shall think. Um, and here it's interesting as well, that he's talking about Macduff's family, and that pretty much um, repeats Lady Macbeth, Macduff, sorry, Macduff's worries from previous scene. So you're repeating her words almost in what, why he left. Macduff, bleed, bleed, poor country. And we've got the repetition of bleed there. Um, which is kind of the motif of the play. There's lots of blood on their hands and the country is now bleeding metaphorically because of what Macbeth is doing to it. Great tyranny, like, lay thou thy basis sure, for goodness dare not check thee, wear thou thy wrongs. The title is a feared. Fare thee well, Lord, I would not be the villain that thou thinks for the whole space that is in the tyrant's grasp and the rich east to boot. So I am not the villain. And um, I'm not in the, the Macbeth's grasp. Macbeth is the tyrant still. Be not offended. So again, Malcolm's like, look, I'm only asking you all these questions about your wife. Why would you leave your children there unprotected? Because again, would you do that? Um, Malcolm's thinking, well, is it that Macbeth's got them under protection? You're working for him. So that's why you don't have to worry about your wife and children. 
he's very suspicious for these reasons if he's under attack from Macduff. Be not offended, I speak not as in absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke, it weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds, which is a lovely metaphor um, in the description of what is happening to Scotland. Uh, and again, it's a reference to what Lady Macduff was saying in the previous scene about the country. I think with all, there would be hands uplifted in my right, and here from gracious England have I offer of goodly thousands. So he personifies um, England here, calling it gracious, right? Um, personifying England. Oop. Personifying England to show its greatness and um, glorifying England like this to say here it says have I offer of goodly thousands um, <clears throat> so he glorifies England which would definitely have pleased a Jacobean audience because they we would have seen this in in England, um, and we'd want to see our country as superior and better. Um, so we've got a contrast for Scotland being quite negatively portrayed and England being positively portrayed. But also, please, King James having everything come together and England being the the dominant um, place that is the the gracious and good, right? But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head or wear it on my sword, yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before, more suffer and more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. So after Macbeth, there, he's saying there will just be a worse king. Because they are in Scotland. So it perhaps is suggesting here that the English monarchy is better suited to the throne and should bring the countries together, which would please James the First, that James the First and England again. An English audience will be very pleased about that idea suggested by Shakespeare there. So again, he is writing to please. We know that for Shakespeare. But in the sense of the play, Macduff thinks that Malcolm should be king. So he's saying here, what should he be? It is myself, I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so grafted. Then when thou shalt be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow, and the poor state esteem him as a lamb, being compared with my confineless harms. So we've got a lovely contrast of black Macbeth, pure as snow. Describing Macbeth will seem pure as snow compared to the next king. Showing you how bad the next king will be. Um, and also we have here this, you will see Macbeth described as a lamb to be mild and meek in nature compared to the next king. So that's how much confidence Malcolm has in himself or the next king of Scotland, which he knows is him, but he's perhaps saying that he doesn't have the capabilities and would be even worse than what Macbeth is now, which is interesting. And remember, this is all testing Macduff, which is why Malcolm is saying it. And I will stop here and continue in part two.